For me, it all begins here. Smile. <laughs> In the classroom. That's right. That is where taking notes, studying, everything, everything academic related starts. We have a 75% mandatory attendance, so I have to be in the classroom. And if I have to be there, I might as well pay attention to the teacher, read the slides and take notes. Hey guys, my name is Emiliano and in this video, I'm going to talk about how I take notes and how I study. These are two very related things for me personally. And they're also things that are very, very important for me as a med student. Anyway, let's start off with how I take notes. How I take notes is very simple and it starts in class with what the teacher is saying and the resources they provide. It's the slides the teacher provides and the teacher themselves. This right here was one of the presentations that we covered in class today. And on this side, you can see how my friend takes notes. She just writes out a summary of what the slides say. She's cop basically copying and pasting from the slides onto her notion page. And this on the other side is how I take notes. Now you can see this is a little bit different. You might not have come across it before. And what I'm doing right here is making questions from the slides, not writing down exactly what it says, but I'm making questions. This is a bit more challenging than just transcribing slides because you can't simply copy paste. You have to read the slides and listen attentively to what the teacher is saying, and then formulate in your head a question that makes sense and then write out the answer. But this is really, really good because that it's a way of already engaging with the content that is outside of just reading it off your computer or off a textbook or anything. And that leads to better understanding and better retention in your brain later on. Honestly, by now, I think it might be quite self-explanatory how I study or how it appears that I study, but don't be fooled, it's not that straightforward. For example, it takes me two months or 59 days to cover one lecture or one topic. Let me break down how that is. The technique I use is called active recall, and basically it involves trying to recall information from your head rather than trying to cram information into your head. It's the difference between asking yourself questions or doing past papers and reading a textbook or highlighting in order to get the same information into your head. One is about drawing information from, from your head into the outside. The other one is trying to put information from the outside into your brain. And that's a really key difference. It but that's not the reason it takes me two months to get through a lecture. It's because I use this other technique called spaced repetition, which is basically engaging with the content that you're supposed to be learning over a prolonged period of time for two main reasons. The first one is so that you interrupt the forgetting curve and that means that you don't forget it. The second one is that you interrupt the forgetting curve. The first one is to interrupt the forgetting curve, which means that if you study it every once in a while, you won't forget it. The second one is to change the location of where that information is being stored. We're changing it from our short-term memories to our long-term memories. And I, I engage with content four times after I write up the notes. And that is the day after, seven days after that, 16 days after that, and then 35 days after that. So that those days all add up to 59 days. And that's why it takes me 59 days to review a topic from start to finish and to move it from the short-term memory of my brain to the long-term memory of my brain, where it will hopefully stay until the exam. And that's basically how I organize my grand scale studying, so to speak, not, not the nitty gritty. I'm going to show you that in a second, but that's how a big sweeping overview of how I study looks like. First of all, as soon as I finish taking my notes in class, I add my page containing all my notes to the one day column on my Notion page. And I add the date, that is the day after that. And that's the first time I need to re-engage with that piece of content that I need to learn again. That next day, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna open my Notion page, I'm gonna look at the calendar where this uh, page went, along with all the other pages that I need to study that specific day. And then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to answer these questions. And while I'm answering these questions, I'm color coding them with four different colors, green for everything correct, yellow for a few incorrect, but mostly correct, orange for mostly incorrect, but a few correct if there's like multiple choice, um, as in like different options or multiple options. And then red if everything is completely wrong. And this is really important and it will become clear why later on in the video. Once I'm done going through a complete page of all these questions, which might range depending on the topic from like 30, 30 questions to maybe 150 if it's anatomy, I scroll the way up to the top. I change the date to the, to seven days or 16 days, depending on one, what the last time I engaged with it. 
and then I change the label too, so, so it goes into the next column. And it's kind of like a pipeline where it goes one day, seven days, 16 days, 35 days, and the date keeps changing. And that also updates my calendar. Um, also, a very important thing is that I'm not expected to keep all this knowledge in my head as I'm answering the questions. For example, if there is a question like this one, where I'm expected to list out three or four or five different options, then what I do is open up a notes on the side and I write out whatever my answer might be, if it's long or complicated or just a bunch of options. And that way I don't have to try to keep everything in my brain at that time. I can, of course, put it from my brain onto a piece of paper and that's part of the active recall that we talked about earlier. Now you might be asking yourself, okay, but why? Why would I do that? I've been summarizing, I've been highlighting, I've been making diagrams and sketches all my life and it works, I've always passed my exams. Why should I do this? And I have two pros and then I have two cons. The main reason that I enjoy this method is because I feel like there's a science behind it. All my life, I too read my textbooks and highlighted and drew diagrams. I made like mind maps. And while I'm certain there is some sort of logic behind that, there is so much like clear defined science behind this and why it works and how it works that just that makes me feel so much more confident in the way that I'm studying. And I know that if I do it well and properly, it will stick in my head and not just for first year medical school, but also for the rest of your life as a professional. Yeah, most of my life I felt like studying was walking around wandering, so to speak, around a prover proverbial field of knowledge, hoping something would stick to me. But this feels very much like I know a path and I know what I have to pick up and I'm walking, I'm striding down this path picking up the knowledge that I need as I go. That's the, that's the key difference for me. That's what it feels like. And then the second reason I enjoy studying like this is because what I need to study is already set out for me. It's already predefined by past me, so to speak. So if I stay on top of my schedule and I study everything I need to study in a day, I already know in my head more or less what I'm gonna need to study in two weeks and in week and in five weeks. And then on Sundays, I can more or less map out how hard, how intense, how busy my schedule is gonna look for the upcoming week based on the work I did the week before and just looking ahead at what I need to study and the dates on my calendars and on my pages. Another small pro is that there's immediate feedback from you. You finish your questions, whether it's 10 questions, 30 questions, or 150 questions, you finish your questions and you can scroll up and go through the colors and be like, okay, anatomy of the leg is really, really red. It's really orange and red and I need to revise that three or four more times. So actually I'll do this in seven days, not 16, because I really need to get this down. Versus maybe like mitosis. Okay, this is really green and I have two yellow questions out of 50. So I can actually, I'll do this again when I need to in 16 days, so to speak, but I'm really fine with this and I don't have to study this as intensely as maybe the leg, right? And then at the end, when, it, when exam time comes and you really need to study, what you can do is skim through all of your anatomy lectures or all of your like biochemistry lectures and see what is the predominating color that you see to, get, to give you like a sense of how prepared you are, but also go through like the specific topics and be like, okay, glycolysis is really green. So I can study glycolysis less than maybe I need to study the Krebs cycle, which is really orange and yellow. So I'm really not sure about that. So I really need to study that. And that's really helpful. I already have a study plan laid out for me based on my strengths and weaknesses throughout the entire semester, which is really, really nice. Now, moving on to the cons, there is a couple of cons that I can name. Mainly, it's the fact that it can pile up in unpredictable ways. Some days might look like this, but other days might look like this. And honestly, that it's really rough when it gets to this point because it is a lot of work. You have to remember that for me, each of these pages is at least two hours of actual physical class. Right. So it can be very draining. And the reason this happens is because every 24 days or so, you'll get a bunch of lectures at the same time. And that means that you're dealing with three days worth of lectures in one single day. The way, the way I handle it is knowing that it's not a very strict deadline. I can do it with a plus minus like one day. So it can, I can spread that out if I need to, which I do often, especially if some days are empty and some days are full. The second con is that it takes a lot of discipline and commitment and motivation and all of that things that you really like need because during first semester, what happened to me was that I think I missed a weekend because I went out. And then by the time it was Monday, I had to do like 25 lectures and I had a full week and I decided it wasn't worth my trouble and I simply stopped doing that. And the way you don't let that happen is by convincing yourself that you need to do this now, not later. 
And I've been studying for the entire semester while a lot of my classmates are starting to study now when we have a month left. And that can also be frustrating knowing people are going out or having a good time and you are still studying. And that's another thing you can open up the page and read and see like, oh my God, I have 200 questions for upper limb and thorax. And that's that can be really tough and really demotivating. And it can also be very frustrating to finish a study session knowing that you don't know anything. As in, I just been sitting down for four, maybe six hours studying, going through my questions. And at the end of the day, I look back and I realize that a lot of them were orange and red. That can be, that can feel very frustrating, but effective learning isn't easy. And I learned that in the book, Make a Stake by Peter C. Brown. Effective learning isn't easy is the mantra that keeps me going in with my studying. I know that when it's hard, that's when I don't know, but that's also when I'm making the most amount of progress during, with my learning. And that's, good in the end. That's what keeps me motivated to keep struggling while I learn. Half of these questions I am supplementing with like Googling and seeing what I know and what does the specific word mean and, and what's the context and all that to really give myself a better chance of answering it next time. The goal for me every time I open one of these topics, one of these pages is to have more green questions than when I started. That's the goal. It's never to have all of them green. It's never to have most of them yellow. It's just to improve every single sitting I have to improve. I have to have more greens than last time and I also have to have less reds and less oranges. If y'all have any questions about my study method, what I use, how I do it, please leave a comment and I'll answer it. Also, if you guys want me to drop the Notion template I made myself to study, leave a comment and I'll pop it in the description and I'll see you guys next time.